What up techies? Welcome back. Does the past still exist? Einstein's four premises seem to think so. It's a question that has puzzled philosophers and physicists for centuries. And it's a question that Albert Einstein famously struggled with. His grappling with this very question led him to develop his theory of special relativity. As any physics student knows, Einstein's theory tells us that the passage of time is relative. In other words, time doesn't flow at a constant rate for everyone. It depends on your frame of reference. For example, if you're moving close to the speed of light, time will appear to slow down for you. But from the perspective of someone stationary, your clocks will appear to be running slowly. This counterintuitive idea was first proposed by Einstein in 1905 and has been verified by countless experiments in the century since. So what does this have to do with the existence of the past? Well, if time is relative, then does that mean the past is still out there somewhere? According to general relativity, the answer is yes, the past exists, though it exists differently than we typically think. Instead of being fixed and immutable, the past is dynamic and ever-changing. It exists as a set of events observed from different frames of reference. So when we say that something happened in the past, we mean that it happened from our current frame of reference. Of course, this raises deep questions about the nature of time and reality. So, let's explore. Time is an illusion. We are always in the present. But time can move so fast that it feels like we're living on alternate planes of reality where days turn into weeks and years go by before you know it. The great physicist Albert Einstein called this relativity. He believed that nothing could be emphasized more than how different people's lives can seem when viewed through a particle's eye versus someone else's human perspective. In the present moment, the same holds in space-time. A dimension's labels lose their significance once time has been transformed into one. We talk about time, but what exactly is it? Exactly what does it mean to say that time is a dimension? Is there an alternate dimension? Ones with supernatural origins? Einstein was the one who grasped the significance of this. It requires four assumptions on our part if we are to comprehend it. Nothing can travel faster than the speed of light in a vacuum. And all perspectives are equally valid because of this. Because of that idea, Einstein was able to develop his theory of special relativity. Furthermore, it is not necessary for there to be observers. Of course, since we're dealing with theoretical physics, we're talking about theoretical observers. Therefore, if another observer with a different point of view is possible, their perspective is just as valid as yours. The word observer conjures up images of a state individual, perched atop a hill with binoculars in hand, patiently scanning the horizon for signs of movement. But what exactly? Is an observer? How about ants? Can they observe? A tree? A dolphin? Perhaps? How and what must one observe to be properly labeled an observer? There is, perhaps surprisingly, considerable debate on this topic in the academic literature. To avoid this interesting discussion, we'll use observer like Einstein did as a coordinate system. It's a coordinate system that a hypothetical observer, dolphin or otherwise could use. Perhaps not the same as the FBI's definition of an observer, but if it was good enough for Einstein, it's good enough for us. According to Einstein's assumption, any coordinate system should be equally capable of describing the physical world. To understand this deeper, let's explore Einstein's four premises of relativity. The first states that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial frames of reference. Imagine you are driving down the highway at the speed of light. Suddenly, you see a police car in your rearview mirror. The blue and red lights are flashing, and the siren is blaring. Do you pull over? Of course not. You keep driving at the speed of light because the speed of light is constant in all inertial frames of reference. Even if the police car were traveling at the speed of light, it would never catch up to you. So the next time you're speeding, just remember, if you're going fast enough, you can outrun the law. The second premise is the speed of light in the vacuum is the same in all inertial frames of reference. It's often said that nothing can move faster than the speed of light. But according to the theory of special relativity, that's not quite true. The speed of light in a vacuum is always the same, regardless of how fast an observer moves. This means that, from certain perspectives, an object can appear to be moving faster than the speed of light. Of course, this doesn't mean that objects can exceed the speed of light. It's just an illusion created by perspective. But it does show that the speed of light is not as absolute as we often think it is. The third premise is that the principles of cause and effect are the same in all inertial frames of reference. If you've ever been in a car accident, you know all about the principles of cause and effect. Objects in motion tend to stay in motion, and objects at rest tend to stay at rest. But what you may not know is that these principles apply to all inertial frames of reference. In other words, they apply to any frame of reference that is not accelerating. So, whether you're on a roller coaster or sitting on a rocket ship, the principles of cause and effect will still apply. And if you're ever unfortunate enough to be in a car accident again, hopefully, 
you'll remember that these principles can help keep you safe. Lastly, space and time can be combined into a single mathematical structure called spacetime. Albert Einstein changed the way we think about space and time. Before his theory of relativity, they were considered two separate and independent concepts. But Einstein showed that they are intimately intertwined. Space and time can be combined into a single mathematical structure called spacetime. This four-dimensional spacetime is not the same as the three-dimensional space that we experience in our everyday lives. It is a curved, dynamic spacetime that is shaped by the presence of matter and energy. Spacetime is also relative, meaning that it is affected by an observer's frame of reference. All of this may sound complicated, but it simply means that space and time are not as simple as we once thought. Everyone discusses events now, but we never stop considering the time it takes light to travel. What exactly is taking so long? Why is it that we can't just agree on a now and move on with our lives? The fourth assumption that Einstein made is one that we can employ. Each point of view is just as credible as the next. To put it another way, physicists would say that the concept of now is observer-dependent, which means that it varies depending on who is measuring. In other words, now is relative to the observer. If you want to discuss the now moment, we are in two distinct places. This idea is also known as the relativity of simultaneity for those who enjoy using overly complicated phrases. In a typical situation, one person is considered to be resting while the other is in motion. But from the person's perspective in motion, they would say that the other person is moving. And from their perspective, they would be correct. So, there can be multiple correct answers depending on the observer's perspective when it comes to the now moment. The bottom line is that there is no universal understanding of what now means. It's all relative. These four premises lead to the conclusion that there is no absolute frame of reference and that the notion of simultaneity is relative. Einstein's theory of relativity overturned centuries of Newtonian thinking about space and time and had a profound impact on our understanding of the physical universe. As a result of the fact that quantum physics is compatible with special relativity, it does not influence the block world in any way. The update to the wave function caused by measurements happens faster than the speed of light. If it were measurable, it could be utilized to provide a definition for the idea of simultaneity. However, this does not constitute a contradiction because it cannot be seen. Some people have theorized that the future cannot be in the block universe at this moment because of the indeterministic nature of quantum mechanics. As a result, they believe that there must be a singular now that denotes the transition point between the two eras. Yes, that may be the situation, but even if such is the case, the earlier argument still remains concerning the past. So, it would appear that the past may exist in the same manner as the present. Whether you're a fan of Einstein or not, his theories are some of the most groundbreaking in history. We've explored four premises that Einstein put forth and how they might be interpreted today. What do you think? Do you believe that the past still exists? Is time an illusion? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more mind-blowing content.